Well, here we go again. Today's Wednesday. Been blowing all the other day, isn't it? My gosh. But there we are. It's dry. And the evenings are getting lighter and everything's all right. We're coming on. Stay, Just stay safe. Stay in, stay safe. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Looking forward to April and May now and going out a bit, a bit of walking and all. And I'm just doing a little story here today. Um, this one's called The Starts Amazon. Oh, I can hardly ache. I hardly ache, man. I can't tell you how now for Grizzlin. It was four eight this morning, see? And I heard this noise below, like, well, I thought twas my ma or one of my grandchildren, and I wasn't expecting no one. And then I heard him, the strangest sound, like a linnet twas, all shrill and high. Mr. Duncan, Mr. Duncan, are you awake, dear? It's Nurse Titty. I'm here for Nurse Barnacote. She's at a fall, poor soul. Well, I come straight up. And then I hear these get feet stankin' up the stairs, heavy like a hemphedryman. Thought she'd be going for the plancher any time. Well, when the door opened, twas like a vision, a starched Amazon. And then, without no invitation, she starts bustling. I'll just straighten your covers and draw the curtains, Mr. Tonkin. Fresh air do aid the circulation. Am I right, Mr. Tonkin? And she turns and looks over her glasses at me. I must have looked like a cornered ferret, hair like a furze bush. Oh, it makes me ache now to think of him. And then she reaches into this bag and takes out some books and starts reading. Tonkin, Arthur John Samuel, bed bath twice weekly. You don't mind if I call you Arthur, do you, Mr. Tonkin? Well, I was struck dumb, as you can imagine. And I think she took that as a no, because she carries on with Mr. Tonkin this and Mr. Tonkin that. And where does it hurt, Mr. Tonkin? And tell me if you're uncomfortable, Mr. Tonkin. And then as quick as you like, she's on me, pulling back the bedclothes and dragging off my nightshirt. Well, I can't pretend I didn't need a bath. You know me. Never was one for all that. And for a second, I did feel a touch of embarrassment. But then she started soaping up and I forgot all about him. Now, she wasn't away of a gardener or nothing. But hell, I aren't going to get particular at my time of life. So I just lay back and took him. Imagine it, ma'am. One minute, you am sleeping like a baby. And the next, an angel in apron is smothering her hands all over me. I aren't religious, as you well know. So I know that I wasn't in heaven. And I thank God for that. Else I'd have missing. Well, she was prodding and pummeling and stroking me from my toes to my nose. And all the time, while well, paying me compliments, all concerned like about my welfare. Arthritis is a terrible cross to barrel, Mr. Tonkin, and you must miss Miss Tonkin terribly. Then, with a final sluice down and flannelling behind the ears, she was gone quick as she came. Well, I lay there for a minute, contemplating my good fortune, and wondering what other delights the day had to offer. When it all of a sudden struck me that during all that time, all that care and coddling, sloshing and washing, I had not heard a single word to the dear woman. Well, I can tell you, I was up out of that there bed quicker than you could say knife and over to the window. Nurse, I cried, nurse, wait. Here, nurse, I'm calling after her, trying to keep from cracking up. I just wanted to say thank you. She did look a bit taken aback. Oh, that's quite all right, Mr. Duncan. All part of the service, you know, says she. Then she's off again. Oh, there's just one thing I'm calling after her. Yes, says she. What is it, Mr. Duncan? Well, you see... I aren't Mr. Tonkin. He's a miserable old bugger who lives next door. Take care.